Where Clay Meets Yarn, episode two. Today is Friday, September 24th. This is Charan Sachar from Creator with Clay. And I'm Nancy Torrance from Schwarzerelli Yarns. And this is our podcast. Yes, we made it to episode two. What an achievement. I mean, I'm proud of us. Yeah. So, and, and I saw that there were people who watched the episode, so... It's not like we just made it for ourselves and kept watching ourselves again and again while editing it. So somebody else watched too. That's true. Thank you to all of you who have watched and are watching this episode. The fact that you came back for more, we really appreciate. And thanks for hanging out. Yeah. And welcome to all the new viewers. You know, if you haven't watched our first episode, you can go back and watch that. And I don't know if many people watched to the very end, but I did add a small blooper clip at the very end of last episode. So if nothing at all, just fast forward and watch that last clip. Just fast forward and watch me make an ass of myself. Or you can just stick around and watch that here, right? Yeah. Chances are I'll do that again. This is why you're the editor, not me. That probably would be left on the cutting room floor. Yeah, no, I I need to put everything in. (laughs) It was quite an experience learning how to edit a video too, because I had I have kind of done it for some of my spinning videos and other stuff, but it's it's a little different editing a podcast and trying to add pictures and you know you were adding show notes, so it's like "Ah, I need to make this look like it all makes sense together. But yeah, but we are we. To give people an idea, this is not a highly edited uh, recording that we do. It's not a highly planned one. We don't make long, lengthy notes as to what we want to talk about. We don't discuss prior to this what we are going to talk about. We are just like, let's talk what happened this week and what goes on. So, Yeah, literally the only thing I have written down for this episode, I just wrote down, which is (laughs) the date and what the name of our podcast is yeah because i don't remember these things all day today i thought it's february i don't know why it just that's where my brain is i guess i don't know but i do know it's september now i wrote it down it's all good we're here we made it through the intro maybe we should talk about yarn and things and stuff yeah Talking about yarn and things, the fun we we had a fun week this week actually. We did. We met in person. We did. Yes, actually, more it was more like a the the birds meeting in person rather than we meeting in person. Okay. It was all about the birds. It's all about the birds. So, should probably back up and share that I am currently bird sitting. Tweety, there we go. Tweety, the Daedalus spinning wheels traveling sparrow. Uh, the wheel itself is called a sparrow. This is an electric spinning wheel. And they are sending this wheel as well as another one. Mm-hmm. It's another name starts sparrow. with an S. It's another sparrow. I'm not remembering it right now. So, Sojourner? Sojourner, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, to various spinners. This one's traveling around the United States and uh, the other one is internationally traveling. This one started its journey in, where is Daedalus located? I should know this. Kentucky? Kentucky? Yeah. Both of them started in Kentucky because that's where they shipped it to. Had a brief stopover in, I'm blurry. Why am I blurry? There we go. The wheel is more interesting. That's The why. wheel is more interesting. <laughs> Had a brief stopover here with Evanita in Washington. And then it really started traveling up to Alaska. Made a couple of stops in Alaska. And then back down to Washington. I'm the third person to post it in Washington. And then I'm going to be shipping it to Idaho, and I'm not sure where all else it's going. So I get to borrow this for two weeks and spin on it. Uh, What's currently on it, I'm actually going to set it down so I don't drop it. 
what's currently on the wheel is some mystery fiber, some mystery wool from Edgewood Garden Studios in yep. her uh, watermelon colorway. Oh, yeah. There yeah. we go. So this is about two ounces. I'm working my way through the other two ounces on the bobbin. I have about an ounce left to spin. And I just started this two days ago. Mm. So while I'm caretaking Tweety, I'm supposed to take her on adventures and write about my time spinning with her and stuff like that. And so uh, Sharon and I had a meetup so Tweety could meet Sona. Yeah. So Sona Gosh. is my sparrow and Sona translates to gold. But I have a question for you. Is Tweety a boy or a girl? Okay, so in the classic uh, Looney Tunes cartoons, Tweety's a boy. And mm -hmm. this is a thing I feel very strongly about. I once upon a time <laughs> used to collect Tweety birds, mm -hmm. which is why I had to sign up for this because it was Tweety. Mm -hmm. Everybody is referring to this spinning wheel as her. Like oh. On the various posts, there's like a little journal that comes with it where we're all sharing about the travels and all of that. Everybody is referring to Tweety as her. So I'm going to go with the spinning wheels, a girl. Maybe the wheel needs to come up with its own pronouns written on it. I mean, probably. Yeah. And it could be, you know, they. It could be they. Yeah. Well, we'll see how this goes throughout my journey here. Journey. I might have, we might have conversations about Tweety's pronouns. Yeah. That's a very good point. Yeah. Uh, I because, uh, yeah, and I, so I have my wheel Sona, which is the sparrow, which is a slightly different shade of um, gold mm -hmm. uh, so from gold. yours. Yeah. And I can share a quick picture of um, our wheels out here meeting each other. Yeah, so, we yeah. took them up to Stilly River Yarns in yeah. Stanwood, Washington to meet up with Lindsay there, who has the green magpie in the center, which is the large wheel. And his name is Kermit. I think he's a he. Now I'm yeah. <laughs> sorry for adding to the confusion. <laughs> now I'm going to have to check with people about their wheel pronouns. <laughs> yes, you have to. I mean, I support that. <laughs> I'm not about to. I, I don't want to make mistakes on my pronouns. It's okay to ask. So. It's okay to ask. Yeah. And that's why I asked. But, uh, but yeah, it was, it was a fun trip. I'm, I am sad for the fact that for one thing that we really didn't get to spin on them. And no, we didn't. We just we, had a photo shoot. <laughs> yeah, we had all these plans. It took me like two hours to get there. The weather was really nice when I started my journey because, oh, in case people don't know, I live south of Seattle, like half an hour south of Seattle, and Nancy is an hour north. Um, I'm about half an hour wi without traffic. I'm yeah. about half an hour north of Seattle. But yeah. And then you add traffic, then we are both two hours away, basically. Yeah. And so it took me forever to get to Nancy's place. Uh, but I did. And then we went further to Stilly Yarns, which is a yarn shop further north, another half an hour north. Mm -hmm. So by the time we reached there, the weather changed. So we could just manage to get photographs. And it was drizzling a little bit. And we were like, eh. Not a good idea to sit outside and spin yeah. because, you know, we are still trying to be careful not staying indoors for long hours. I said, let's sit out, but the, the weather seemed good, but then it turned on us. So we didn't get to spin much, but, but it was still a nice trip. Shop. We did get to shop. Yes, we did. We got some bird food, basically. We did. We got fiber for our wheels. And I let Tweety pick out their preferred fiber mm -hmm. and Tweety picked out a bio weapon. <laughs> yeah. 
it speaks this, to the neon color of it, right? Yes. I guess. This is um, Homestead Hobbyists Fibers of Mass Destruction's bioweapon. Right. Let me actually get into it so you guys can see it because it's really pretty. It's 50% Corydale, 25% bamboo, 25% tussle silk. And look at how scrumptious this is. His blends are just amazing. They are. I, I really think his was the them. first fiber I spun with. Really? Yes. Well, the the very first fiber was, you know, just some fiber sample somebody gave yeah. me. And I don't know what it was. But then the first fiber I purchased for spinning was his fiber. It was, um, which is that red one? Blood something. Bloodstain? Bloodstain, yes. So that was the one I had selected and that I had spun on the Ashford uh, spinning wheel, which mm -hmm. I was borrowing at that time. And I actually used it up in one of my weaving projects as well. So, oh, cool. and as far as shopping is concerned, you know, I, before I went there, I told Nancy, I said, I'm not going to shop for anything because I have so much fiber. <laughs> but it was, you know, Ken's homestead hobbyist fiber, you cannot say no when you see something like, you know, the garnet colorway. And oh, I usually they... don't spin with stuff that's so dark, but I just it's absolutely so love it. Yeah. Yeah, your webcam is not doing that justice. It's not yeah, doing your stuff. I will, I will take better pictures and post uh, a better picture of my shopping boot from there. <laughs> Uh, I did, you could just like, I was, I was almost done shopping, uh, because I did want to get some yarn as well for a baby blanket that I'm planning, but that was going to be in addition to some of Nancy's morphine minis. So, uh, she had gifted me this a while back. It's been probably more than two years. No. It's been February, about two years. January 2020, I think, right? When you came to visit mom? Oh, yeah. 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 So it's not quite two years. Not quite two years, but it's just been sitting in packages. Uh, I've been thinking of doing something with it. Uh, but the cool thing about Nancy's yarn is that I can join them up this way and make a whole gradient going from gray to red. Uh, and I want to knit a blanket with it. And we were there and we discussed the Bounce baby blanket, mm -hmm. which has garter stripes in between. And I think this yellow would go really well with it. Yeah. So that's what the plan was. I purchased the pattern. I came home. I did have uh, some yarn with me, which was, you know, which was your butter beer, which kind of looks very similar. And I had some of your yarn. I made a tiny swatch just to see how I like the yarn. The lace doesn't show up too well. It kind of does show against my gray t-shirt. Yeah, it does. But uh, it it I I picked, I wanted to knit a blanket pattern, especially for a podcast, because I'm like, I need some mindless long rows to knit on. This pattern is not mindless. <laughs> it's, it's lace on both sides. And it, it means it would be mindless, like it's easy, easily memorizable, but I, for that I need to look at the pattern while knitting. Yeah, that's not while good talking, podcast knitting. Yeah, it's not good podcast knitting, basically. So I think I might knit something similar, like do a zigzag garter stitch and just have, uh, you know, um, your gradient being where the black is and the yellow being some stripes in between. That'll be pretty still. So. I'm <coughs> excited to see what you decide to do with it. Yeah. So that's what the current plan is. Uh, I didn't I didn't do anything further, just some research as to regarding yardage. And I'm thinking like as long as have as long as I have twice the amount of yardage for the gradient compared to the accent color, I'm good. Yeah. And I can measure twice the yardage just based on, well, if I do 
eight rows of the gradient and four rows of that, I'm good. And I'll keep knitting till I'm out of yarn, basically. Sure. So that's essentially what my plan is for that. Awesome. And then, sorry, but I had to show my last purchase, which was yes. silk hankies. This is something I didn't expect to purchase, but I just saw them kept there. And I was like, I've always wanted some silk hankies. And I have some, but they are not in the colors I like. I don't know how they landed up in my stash. But I got some neon green in there, so I'm a, that'll yeah. be fun. Those are those are really pretty. I'm excited to see what you do with them. Have you have you spun silk hankies before? I have. I have. I have not spun silk hankies as just silk hankies. Mm-hmm. I have made some art yarns, very textured art yarns. Okay. And I kind of use the silk hankies as like a glaze over the texture. Interesting. So it was like, I'll, I'll try to remember to insert a picture of that out here. So it was like a very crazy colorful yarn mm-hmm. and had lots of texture and everything, but it had a lot of colors in it too. Mm-hmm. But I kind of glazed it while I was plying with a silk hanky. And it was a bright yellow colored silk hanky. So it gives us yellow gold halo over the entire. Oh, that sounds really cool. It kind of pulls it together. So I kind of want to do more of that. No, I was just thinking, I, once upon a time, I tried spinning silk hankies and I have some in my stash as well. That's probably the same colorway as what you got. Mm. It's very similar anyway. Uh, for me to attempt trying them again but I remember all I can remember was the silk hankies got caught on every little piece of rough skin on my hands and I have pretty soft hands but like every hangnail every (laughs) callus it caught on and so I can just imagine for your clay hands oh yeah it's bad like I Remember when I started working with those hankies, I had to first wash my hands with um, salt and with oil, like you scrub your hands with that really well. And then you just wash them and wipe them dry. Don't use soap after that because it again dries your hand. But you kind of want your hands to be a little bit slick. And that really helped like removing any rough surfaces and also like almost having a a very natural lotion on my hand because lotion doesn't work either because that gets sticky. Yeah. But the olive oil with the salt and scrubbing it and then just washing with water and wiping them dry kind of helped to quite an extent. But but it's been a while since I worked with the hankies. So we'll see. And I've heard people just knit from it directly. They don't even spin it because it's just such a long staple length. You can just stretch it and just knit with it. Yeah. Um, Yarn Harlot has a blog post on doing that. And I think a pattern that went with it that she did mittens out of. This was, this was several years ago. Mm. Um, but her mittens were really pretty. I remember... I haven't read her blog in years, but back when I was doing it, that was a thing. And I have a feeling that the olive oil and salt thing also I've gotten from her. I've taken some class from hers where she recommends, you know, that mix to just smoothen your hands. I think it was her. But yeah, it's... uh, it's a fun thing to play with, at least. Cool. Well, now I'm doing the bit. You were talking about easy uh, things over here. Easy podcast knitting. Mm-hmm. I didn't have any easy to grab podcast knitting today. So I am finishing up the socks that I was working on last week. And I just finished my last um, ribbing row. So now I'm 
transferring from the tiny dropping stitches, transferring from the tiny nine inch circular needles to my long needles for magic loop so I can bind off. Oh, but you're done with the ribbing. I'm done with the ribbing. Like there will be a finished pair of socks by time this episode is over, I think. Nice. I've said that now I'm just going to drop a <laughs> bunch of stitches and <laughs> cry or, you know. <sighs> never, never, never say your expectations loud. Just say them in your head and just move on. <laughs> oh, man. If only I could get myself to do that. So I was going to like hold other things up and show them, but now I am in, now I'm in transfer mode, bind off transfer <laughs> mode. So you I have... can go next. I can, okay. I can show something. I, so the other thing which happened this week was I, I hadn't been spinning for quite some time, almost a month or so, uh, because, you know, I, I go through phases of spinning but I had gone through a very long phase of spinning for a while, uh, especially last year. And I had, uh, I was part of the artist in residence program with the uh, Fibery Goodness uh, Tiny Studio magazine and uh, with Susie Brown. And I, you know, learned so much in that process. And I was spinning a lot of art yarns, a lot of experimentations and everything. And we used to do a bunch of these live sessions, you know, uh, Susie, myself, and Evanita, we would get online in a Zoom call and go live on Facebook. And she would throw in a challenge like, spin something with beads, spin something with scraps of yarn, spin something with scraps of fabric. And I would just spin and she would spin along and we would make two completely different yarns out of it. And uh, recently I was watching an old video of ours, which I was like, that was so much fun to do. So I messaged Susie and I said, we need to do this. It's been a while and I need a, you know, a push, a challenge to do something. And I, I said that without thinking much. And uh, she was like, yes, that sounds good. How about locks? And I have never spun locks before. <laughs> I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> That's going to be a challenge. <laughs> so she's like, you asked for it. So, so we did that. And uh, I have the yarn right here that I spun. I core spun this yarn. And then mm -hmm. I added these locks. Now, these locks are long. Some of these locks were around 12 inches long. Oh, my goodness. And... Um, so I spun the, uh, while I was core spinning with a bat I made, the pinkish bat that I made, I was attaching the locks in it. And then I plied the yarn with a crazy yarn. But let me back up a little bit. When I was core spinning and adding these locks, it was looking like a rag doll. And I was like, okay, this is very crazy because it has too many colors in it. <laughs> and it is looking very untamed and crazy on my bobbin. And then when plying, I went ahead. Uh, let me show you a better picture because that might make more sense. So there you can see that. But when I started plying it with that, you know, really bright colored yarn, I absolutely love the way that bright colored yarn was peeking through all that madness around it. And uh, so overall, I, I, at the end of it, I landed up liking the yarn, but there were many stages through which I was going like, I don't know what I'm doing. I shouldn't be doing this live. We need to cancel this live feed right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's like, uh, it was fun. It was fun to do, but, uh, and I did learn a lot about how to add locks. So technique wise, I really felt like I got it, how I would like to do this again. Uh, I would change my color choices, the choice I use for my bat or something. But what I did learn from it is like how excited I got with just that plied yarn in between, which is just a commercial yarn. And it just enhances the beauty of the overall yarn so much more. 
that uh, you kind of don't know what might surprise you until you actually go through the process and finish the yarn. Yeah, it's what I really like about it with with the brightly colored Mm -hmm. ply is I feel like that complements the wildly dyed locks really Mm -hmm. well. And so those sort of unify with each other and then you really get to see the pink spirals yeah, the pink spirals. yeah. so you you get that separation it's it's really neat yeah and it, it really you know it'll it. change further based on what project it's used for mm-hmm. if it's used to knit something or used you know in a woven piece of fabric it just yarn goes to so many stages fiber as such you know once you dye it once you make a bat out of it once you spin it once you ply it, then once you knit with it, once you weave it, once you start washing and wearing it, it just keeps changing so Changes. much that you just don't know where it might go. And so just just keep at it is what I say. Yeah. I mm. I think I have to say this, like I, I just realized something like, you know, in in the quilting world, because now I'm listening to more and more about quilting, they keep talking about this, that if you don't like a fabric, you haven't cut it small enough. I think I like that. And if you don't like a yarn, I think you haven't plied it enough. So just keep plying it and over plying it and (laughs) over plying it till you're like sick of it. (laughs) Then you're like, yes, now I like it finally. Oh, that's amazing. Did you have anything fun happening in your dye studio? Yeah, I I don't know if I'd say it's fun. Oh. <laughs> I I ended up with no, let me let me backtrack. I over the summer I adopted some steam tables for the dye lab. And I have spent the past 10 years dyeing my yarn with oblong pots on uh, hot plates. And that has worked great. I ha- Obviously, I have a system. I've dyed yarn like this for 10 years. It's been great. But these steam tables fell into my lap. And what's nice about them is they're more energy efficient than what I have. They are better for conserving water and uh, they're much bigger than Mm. the pots that I was using. So I could dye more yarn at once. I could dye larger batches at a time. And so I started experimenting with it and I found a way that I like to dye it. And then show prep started for fiber fusion, which has now since been canceled. And I got really hot to trot on dyeing the yarn and just getting it dyed. And I hadn't gotten around to really twisting it and labeling it mm-hmm. and all of that until after fiber fusion was canceled. And so I've been working my way through that. And by me, I mean my parents who are really awesome and help me um, with yarn prep like that. They do all of the twisting and labeling. And I started unpacking the yarn here to hang up on the yarn wall. And I discovered that these skeins were coming out much more variegated than they used to. Mm -hmm. My really subtle tonal colorways that I've been dying for a really long time. (laughs) Are very variegated now. (laughs) Are very variegated. Uh They're still beautiful. They're still very obviously the same colorway inspiration mm-hmm. um yeah they're not they're not right and I can't sell them as they're supposed to be so I have decided to refer to them as seconds and mm-hmm. I have about 80 skeins of yarn oh. that that's a lot that of blankets I'm putting up <laughs> it is there's you know Depending on what you're going for, there's easily a sweater quantity or two in here. Oh, yeah, for sure. 
And so I'm putting them up as of, as of the time of recording this, they are not on my website yet. By the time this recording goes live, they will be available for my patrons. Mm -hmm. So if you want access to them first, sign up for my Patreon, but they will, the sale yarn, whatever's left that my Patreon patrons leave for the rest of everybody will go live on my website. Let's say Monday afternoon. Monday Pacific time. I'm not putting a time on it. They'll go live. Come Follow my it. Instagram. <laughs> no, I'm not. It, the way that I have to transfer things from being live for my patrons to being live but for the general else. public, there isn't, I can't set a time for it. And mm. it's like a one by one process. So afternoon, we'll get it done before 4 p.m. Pacific yeah. time. That's good. So yeah, that is, that has been my not so fun work project. Like it's been today, I spent my entire morning editing photos for it. Yesterday, I spent the whole day photographing all the yarn. So it's, it's good that, or what I meant by saying that's good. It's good that you got the stuff done. It's bad that this happened. But then I just realized it when I said that's good. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I know you're not I taking delight it. in my pain. No, but it sure is interesting, you know, for people who are indie dyers or, you know, who are just thinking about dying and going like, yes, I would like to die on someday. Rancy, for how long have you been dying on? Um, I've been 10 and a half years. Yeah, so after 10 and a half years and having the process down and everything, you do a simple change, like just change the size of mm -hmm. the thing in which you're dyeing it, and it changes everything. <laughs> yeah. So it's, but, but you know, if, uh, like, if you have that experience, you kind of know now how to tweak it to change things to what you want. Yes, I am very happy to announce that I have figured out what the issue is. I have solved it. The yarn coming out of the dye pots now looks like it's supposed to. So mm -hmm. those colorways are all going to come back to what we all know and expect from them. So anything dyed on demand on the website will will come out as as expected. So yeah. the colorways that I have, so you can be planning. There's a batch of unicorn blood, mm -hmm. um, draft of living death. One can never have enough socks. Nox, Expelliarmus, and you must be a Weasley. So start yeah, so planning this, your projects. There's, it's mostly DK and fingering weight. Oh, nice. Sparkle and non-sparkle, because we do love sparkle here. Yes. Sparkle is always fun. Yeah. And, you, yeah. and your sparkle is kind of like a gold sparkle, isn't it? It is. Um, on my fingering weight, it's a gold sparkle. Uh -huh. On my DK weight, it's a silver sparkle. But mm. both of them are really subtle, and yeah. unless you get right up on the yarn, it's not obvious one way or the other. Some... It just is it, it this? Just shimmers. Butterbeer has a little bit of sparkle. You can barely see it on this mm -hmm. video, but it's there. Oh, wait, are we both working with? You're, you're not working with it right now, but I'm also. No, I'm not. I I am. I showed this off last time, and it still does not want to sparkle, but this is it also on my spectacular base. Yeah. It's just not going to. That's fine. Everything's it's fine. fine. So that was my dye lab success and failure this week. <laughs> you have anything going on in the clay studio? I think I saw you had a uh, kiln um, unloading yesterday, right? Yes. I... Uh, I was supposed to have this earlier in the week. I had promised some pieces to get shipped out much sooner than I had anticipated. But 
last weekend was crazy. We had some crazy rain and we had flickering lights. And I'm like, I'm not turning on the kiln no. with all that going on because I have lost an entire kiln load in the past because of power going out. Oh, man, that sucks. Uh, so, and it's happened on few occasions because of different reasons, but once it's happened because of power and it wasn't just the kill load, but it had also blown up the motherboard of my computer control thing. Oh no. So I had to even replace that. So I'm like now when, you know, there's heavy rain and there's thunder and if a light flickers even once that day, I'm like, no, this will have to wait. Yep. So um, I had to wait till Monday to fire and then, you know, things need to cool down. Then I had to inventory what was out to ship. So I shipped everything as soon as I could. But uh, but yeah, then finally on yesterday was Thursday, right? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Yesterday I did a live kiln unloading. Uh, all the pieces that had to ship out as soon as possible, I left them at the very top of the kiln. So as soon as the kiln was cool enough, I could pick out those pieces, pack them out, and ship them out. And the rest of the kiln unloading, I did live on Instagram, Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, all my platforms. I just go all over and just uh, post everything there. And uh, it was fun. I, I like the surprises as they come out from the kiln. And, uh, you know... People can watch what is coming out, what's new. Uh, because every time, even though, like for the lace pattern mugs or for the embroidery mugs, there is there are a lot of you know colors I add on it. There's always a different intensity of color that comes through. Yeah, those so, are really nice to pick out. Yeah, seeing them as as in person and po- as possible. Exactly. And and it, the whole experience of doing this live kin lo- unloading, it reminds me so much about shows yeah. where they can completely see the excitement of me showing them new work as well as uh, people. I can see their excitement on, you know, that they're like, oh, that one looks good. Or can you show me that size with, you know, a different color or whatever and it it feels so much like a show which I really miss so it kind of feeds that part of my life a little bit that's really neat I'm honestly a little bit jealous I haven't found the yarn version of that to do (laughs) well (laughs) just hide them in a kiln I will just hide them in a kiln and then open the kiln up and pull them out (laughs) Next time I come visit you, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to bring bags full of yarn and dump them in your kiln. Yes. And we'll do a live kiln unloading. We, we can pull out a mug with a yarn in it. How about that? Okay. You know what? Yeah. As much of a smart ass as I was just being, we should do that. That's we should genius. totally do that. <laughs> uh, and... Um, this is where then, we get all of our great ideas from being a yeah, smartass. Yes. We, we think we are, you know, upping the other person and then we get roped into doing something which you don't want to do. <laughs> yep. I did have one mishap in the firing though. And and I, I hate that I did because it was it was this big piece I made. Uh, it was a jar set which I'd made for my mom. Uh, there were these two jars on a tray and they have lids on it. And one of my uh, customer called them, friend called them because, you know, they have been such good collectors of my work that I know them personally. Yeah. Uh, she had placed an order for them as well in different colors. So I said, okay, I'll make you one. And that piece, everything came out so good about it. But one of the lids has warped so much, it doesn't sit on the thing. Oh, no. So I have to make another lid for it, which is not too bad. But then because it doesn't sit properly, I'll probably have to make another jar for it as well. To make sure that they... They nest together properly. They dry together and all of that. That's the thing with clay when, uh, you know... Like, I have had people, like, I've made leaded pieces before. Occasionally, you know, stuff breaks and stuff. And it's like, 
can you make me a replacement lid? I said, I'll just have to make the whole piece. It's harder for me to make just the lid because this is a piece I just made. It's still in front of me and I still cannot make the lid for it. It doesn't help, you know, if a piece was purchased 10 years back and you say, oh, the lid broke it, make me another lid. It yeah. just doesn't work too well like that with clay. But yeah, I never think about those things. Yeah, so it's like there is no recipe to it. Well, there are kind of recipes to it, but the way clay shrinks and everything, you just kind of want the jar and the lid and everything to shrink together, to fit together. So Yeah. So we'll see. Hopefully, I will make another jar with a lid for her and it should all work together. Yeah, that'll be nice. But yeah, the kiln unloading was fun. And uh, I I don't do them very often. I usually, uh, there have been people asking me about, you know, like people will message me and they're like, I want to get some some of your mugs, but they are all sold out. And the, the thing is that, yes, they're sold out and sometimes they're not. Like right now, what I did was after I did the kiln unloading, there were people who purchased it, you know, live they just went on my website and purchased the pieces but then whatever that is left is still on my website even currently i do have some mugs which are ready to ship mm -hmm. and they are listed like that but if you find a mug which is not ready to ship there is always a link in there where you can do a made to order mm -hmm. for it and whenever i'm making mugs i always give priority to you know the ones that are already pre-ordered so I make sure they are in the kiln and I make multiples and then the multiples go on the website as ready to ship so don't wait till there's something ready to ship because there's a chance that I will not make it <laughs> but yeah. if, if you want something whenever you want it just place a made to order because there's a good chance that I'm out of the next extras coming in the next firing you could get yours next week or when you want to roll the dice, exactly. Look for a kiln unloading. Exactly. There are there are different ways of doing it, and that has changed because of. Oh, did you finish? I finished. Oh my goodness, that's some achievement. <laughs> I told you I'd get it done. Is the other one done too, or no? Oh, I've you're finished. Finished. I've got. Well, I still have to leave the ends. Well, I don't think you do that anyway. So. Yes, I do. You do? Okay. Yeah. I mean, not on my star blanket that I've now <laughs> been using for a year, but you know, it's fine. Yeah, that's a sorry. Big I totally interrupted you, but I was excited. No, it's it getting a project finished is quite an excitement. Not like some of mine, which I'm going like, yes, another few rows and. For me, the reason for not finishing projects is usually because I'm enjoying knitting on them so much, I don't want it to get over. Yeah. That's where I land up with the whole thing that I don't want to finish it because either I don't know what to do next or I'm having so much fun doing this that I don't want it to end. Yeah, I have, I still haven't finished the um, Queen of Hearts shawl. Mm. And I'm very close to the end of it. I've started working on the edging. That's all that's left. I keep procrastinating that because one, I've really enjoyed it and I don't want it to be over. And no. two, when I finish it, I'm going to have to block it. And it's a big shawl. I'm going to have to find a place to block it. So I'm also like dragging out the finishing of that. I finished a project. So since I stopped, since I stopped knitting, I can show you other things I've been working on. Yes. Let's see here. So for big shawls, I have an update on the ghost. Lift Your Spirits crochet yes. along. I just see ghosts in that shawl and nothing else. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's why. Ooh. It got bigger. It did get bigger. It's not a lot bigger, but it's bigger. The ghost has a waist. The... <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. And it dances. That's so cool. 
Yeah, I, this is, this is most of clue two. I have three rows left of clue two, which puts me a week behind, two weeks behind because clue four just came out today, mm -hmm. but I've been dragging my feet, but this is all I have left oh, wow. of, of the skein of birthday suit. So today I caked up the minis, my first pack of minis. Oh, you uh, caked it all together. I caked it all together, which normally I don't do. I know you keep lecturing me about it, but you should never do that because you don't get the sense of you don't you get know, the sense achievement. of completing them. Yeah. Yeah. But for this shawl, it eats through yarn so quickly. Yeah. I didn't want to have to do Stop a tiny and... cake and then the next day do it again and then do it again. And so. Um, and your rows is... are getting longer too. So it Yeah. The rows are getting a lot longer. So it just, it eats through yarn so fast. So this is the ghost of Mrs. White going from white to gray. And then I'll be adding Mrs. White's demise, which goes from gray to black. And because the rows keep getting longer and because I'm not sure what the edging is like, that one I might have to wind each of the minis individually in case I need to divide them up. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. But in the meantime, we have ghosties. Very excited about my ghosties. I was working on that today. It was fun. I'm really getting the hang of it. It took this, this project took a little bit of getting used to, but I really dig it. And then the other thing, remember my felt sequin project that I yes. was just starting last week? Uh-huh. You just kept working on it and oh my goodness, that's so cool. <laughs> I, I am totally obsessed with it. I, I can't, I can't put it down. <laughs> Well, it's Halloween it's themed. So. It's Halloween themed and it's like exactly the right level of fiddly. You'd hate it. You would absolutely hate working on this. Yeah. It's all tiny stitches. Yeah, fiddly stuff and I don't go together. And there's another bat. Oh, goodness. And, and the next thing that I have to add is a potion bottle. Ooh. It's so cute. I, are you going to be adding more sequins to that or is it kind no, of? No, this like one that? for some reason doesn't have sequins over here. I think it's just because mm -hmm. of the reflection or something on it. Uh, but this one is going to go down here. Oh, nice. And it's kind of going to stick there because. Not stick there because. It's, it's kind of going to stick there. <laughs> And then the next thing after that is going to be a broom. Oh, which cool. Goes over here. I'm totally obsessed with this. It's been so much fun. I have the broomstick. It looks like fun. Ready. <laughs> there's so many fun elements in it. Yeah. So there's that. Those are kind of that and the ghosts have been it a big focus on crafting. And then now that I have finished the socks my next mindless project is going to be finishing up you guessed it more socks socks is a good mindless project to work on yeah these smell like citronella because they're stored with my citronella candles i was working on them outside over the summer so I am most of the way done with this pair of socks. I'm mm -hmm. working them in tandem, um, going through all of the uh, gradient mini skeins from the first year of my Patreon. Okay. So it's going to be 12 colors in total. And I only have three, three, I think, three mini skeins left to add. Ooh, I like the transition of the colors. Me too. They're fun. So that's what I'm 
That's what I'm going to work on now. Cool. Talking about Halloween, Casper mm-hmm. got a Halloween gift. <gasps> really? Yeah, and it was weird because, like, I'm not big into Halloween. Means it's like another holiday, or if it's a holiday, even. But I say uh, it's a holiday. Okay, fine, it's a holiday. But uh, Rima has this thing of whenever she goes to the store, she feels guilty about Casper being at home. She has to pick something for him. <laughs> so she's like, "I got him a Halloween gift, and you're gonna get a kick out of seeing his gift." Uh, and she didn't realize what she was doing until she actually did it. But let me screen share and show you what that was. <laughs> no, he has Gomez. He has Gomez. And I'm like, did you realize that you're buying a Gomez toy for Casper? And she's like, Oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> Rima? No. Yep, so Casper has a Gomez to play with. Oh, my God. And even, he even has the gold eyes and everything. Everything. Like, like look at Gomez behind uh, Nancy's yeah, shoulder, this right? Is, yeah, this is the quilt that my mom made me for Christmas. For Christmas? For my birthday, something like that yeah. last year. A portrait of my cat. No. So it's very accurate. It is very accurate. The little and void with the glowing eyes. Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> but he that's has his a favorite Gomez toy. And and Casper needs a name for all his toys. So that one clearly is Gomez. Yeah. Yeah. It's like go get Gomez. And he goes <laughs> around the house grabbing Gomez by the neck and brings it to us. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see what happens when he actually sees a Gomez in front of him and go like, oh, feisty. (laughs) Oh no, a Gomez that can attack back. (laughs) Yes. Like Casper gets all brave with even the neighbor's cat. And then that cat just has to hiss at him. And he goes like, what was that? I'm going back home. (laughs) It just runs back home every single time. Oh, that is amazing. I know, that was a, that was a, fun Halloween related thing which I thought you would enjoy. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so perfect. And uh, as far as things that I'm working on uh, after my whole play adventure and my kill firings and everything, I, I, I at least wanted at least some mindless knitting going on. So I did pick up uh, the baby sweater I was knitting. And I didn't share it in the last episode, but I can't share it now. Well, the baby still isn't here, but whatever. It's it's this tiny little cute sweater. It's the um, In Threes by Kelly Hertrich. Is this how you say her name? I don't know. But it's it's you're the one who recommended the pattern to me. I don't remember her name. Okay. But I'm I'm on the end. I'm just doing the garter stitch uh, border. Then I do four plain rows and then another six rows of garter stitch and get those ridges in. And that'll be the end of the sweater. There's no finishing of the sleeves or anything. It'll be done, done. So I that's what I'm working on currently. And the other thing... I kind of achieved this week, which surprisingly didn't take as long as I thought it would. Um, I signed up for a class on uh, quilt edge finishing on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So that's going to happen on Sunday. And as part of homework for the class, we are supposed to prepare um, seven quilt sandwiches. which are ready to have their edges on them. So basically the top of the quilt, the batting and the backing, but of course not big quilts. The recommendation was 12 to 16 inches or something. So I'm like, sure, I can do that. And I just signed up for it this week. So it was like within, I was like, I have a week. If I did one of them every day, then maybe I can have seven ready and that should be good enough. But 
what I did was I kept debating. I said, oh, I'll just get some scrap fabric, like fat quarters, sandwich them together and be done with them and, you know, call it a day. But I had all these blocks, uh, you know, what I call them orphan blocks from previous projects lying around. And they are all weird and most of them don't go together. But I was like, let me just put all of them together and just just have something, you know. So yeah. they are still not very well coordinated. The backings are not well coordinated, but I'm like, it's for a class. So it doesn't matter. So that's what I was surprised with that within two days, I was able to get all the quilt tops done. So I have that ready. Wow. Uh, I just have to sandwich them and it's not even necessary for us to quilt them. We just have to spray base them and attach them. But I can show some of them to you. Oh, cool. um, <laughs> some of them, are, the, the backings are really hilarious because I just kind of like, yeah, that piece looks big enough. So, awesome. and even the front of the pieces are weird. So like, this is going to be the quilt top. It's a bunch of just random blocks which are there lots of triangles lots of triangles some weird strips and the backing of it <laughs> it's thomas the tank engine exactly it's, it's it's that kind of stuff that's going to go on here um i did one very precise kind of piecing for this one okay which cool. i usually don't do my corners so so proof that if I want my corners to meet, I can make them meet. I just choose <laughs> not to. And this is the backing fabric I have for it. <laughs> Meaner dogs? That's yep. great. It's, it's anything that's silly and funny just got in there. This was, again, like scraps from a previous project. Uh, the quilt I just finished. And I had this very antique pink flowers fabric oh, okay. yeah. i'm like that can That'll go together go. uh this is one of my favorite ones which came from the whole experiment i do Ooh, like that i like how that came out yeah it has some batik fabrics and some grunge fabric in it and then i found this backing oh very elegant so very elegant and i think this is probably close to something that kind of goes together mm -hmm. and then so that was number five i think this I is number counting uh, i need seven i was counting all the time <laughs> and this is another one of those uh improv quilts i had some blocks made which i cut them up i added some orange bits to it and I had enough of that same fabric, which can go at the back. So Ooh, this one is, matchy. this will be like matchy, matchy. Uh, though I have no idea what I'm going to use for the binding because we need binding fabric as well. And for that, it's probably going to be more Thomas Train fabric for everything <laughs> because I have so much of it and I don't know what to do with it. That's and great. this is another one of those crazy improv blocks mm -hmm which were remainings of other projects and that's what's going to go in oh cool Ooh, and i have another one i don't know i haven't made more than seven. Ooh, i like that one yeah so that has just the two colors and that i have enough of this fabric to go at the back so another little bit coordinated piece so i'm looking forward to that workshop and seeing what I learned from it because I just know one way of binding mm -hmm. by using a two and a half inch strip and I've done one with a wider strip as well following the same principles but I hear that there are more than one ways to do it and you can have like a no edge binding or a very thin one and some of my quilts are not going to have straight edges so it's like, how do you apply binding to something like that, which does not end at a straight edge? So yeah. it'll be fun to see what happens there. Yeah, I'm really interested in hearing what you learn from class. Yeah. So. And seeing all of the Thomas borders. <laughs> That's going to be like, I was first like, I, it doesn't matter. It's, you know, 
it's just for a class it's just for learning purposes and all but then at the same time i know we are going to be in a zoom uh meet up i'm like people will be watching my stuff they're like this person doesn't know color at all how could you have that kind of border with that kind of a quilt top and <laughs> so it, it worries me a little bit <laughs> people it's might fine. think that it's fine it's just for a class and i think these are going to be big enough that it might be a decent size for like a placemat or something so they could get some use out of them as yeah. well so so I we have. could in fact use something other than thomas for the border or just embrace it and do thomas all the way i, I kind of like yeah that have them really coordinated <laughs> with the thomas stream yes <laughs> that sounds like a good plan we'll see but yeah that's what i have going on i do have to a uh, work in the studio this evening and over the weekend to prepare some urgent pieces for an order so i need to work on that as well uh it's going to be a busy weekend yeah uh, me too that's okay yeah there are, there are it's always good to stay busy so that's always good yes Well, I think I think that's all my things. Is that all your things? I think that's all my things. I didn't even make proper notes. I just I've, I've on my on my notes out here I've written Jan Casper quilt. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I think I covered those three things. <laughs> I don't know what yarn refers to, but I sure. think no it was the art oh, yarn. Oh, your art yarn. Yeah. I so. I got gotcha. you. Jeez, gotcha. you forgot already. I maybe wait. I'm supposed to pay attention too. Dang it! Th- this shows how engaged our viewers are going to be. <laughs> yeah. Like, we don't know what we talked about half an hour back. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's great. Well, before we make them forget anything else, I think this means we should probably sign off. I think we should. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching everyone and if you want to get reminders, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell notification. Yeah. So you'll be reminded again and again that we are here every week. And follow us on social media. Yes. Take care everyone. Bye. Bye.